What do you think of sex, Colonel Brady? In what spirit is this question asked? Well, I'm not asking you what you think of sex as a father, or as a husband, or even as a presidential candidate. You're up here as a, an expert on the Bible. What is the biblical evaluation of sex? It is considered original sin. And all these holy people got themselves begat through original sin? Well, all that sin and make them any less holy? Your Honor, where is this leading us? What has it got to do with the state versus Bertram Cates? Colonel Drummond, the court must be satisfied that this line of questioning has some bearing on the case. You've ruled out all of my witnesses. You must allow me to examine the one witness you've left to me in my own way. Your Honor, I am willing to sit here and endure Mr. Drummond's sneering and his disrespect. For he is pleading the case of the prosecution by his contempt for all that is holy. I object, I object, I object. On what grounds? Is it possible that something is holy to the celebrated agnostic? Yes. The individual human mind. In a child's power to master the multiplication table, there is more sanctity than in all your shouted amens and holy holies and hosannas. An idea is a greater monument than a cathedral. And the advance of man's knowledge is a greater miracle than all the sticks turned to snakes or the parting of the waters. But now, are we to forego all this progress because Mr. Brady now frightens us with a fable? Gentlemen, progress has never been a bargain. You have to pay for it. Sometimes I think there's a man who sits behind a counter and says, all right, you can have a telephone, but you lose privacy and the charm of distance. Madam, you may vote, but at a price. You lose the right to retreat behind the powder puff or your petticoat. Mister, you may conquer the air, but the birds will lose their wonder and the clouds will smell of gasoline. Darwin took us forward to a hilltop from where we could look back and see the way from which we came. But for this insight and for this knowledge, we must abandon our faith in the pleasant poetry of Genesis. We must not abandon faith. Faith is the most important thing. Then why did God point us with the power to think, Mr. Brady? Why do you deny the one faculty of man that raises him above the other creatures of the earth? The power of his brain to reason. What other merit have we? The elephant is larger, the horse is swifter and stronger, the butterfly is far more beautiful, the mosquito is more prolific, even the simple sponge is more durable. What does a sponge think? I don't know. I am a man, not a sponge. <laughs> what do you think a sponge thinks? If the Lord wishes a sponge to think, it thinks. Do you think a man should have the same privilege as a sponge? Of course. This man wishes to be accorded the same privilege as a sponge. He wishes to think. But your client is wrong. He is deluded. He has lost his way. It's sad that we don't all have your positive knowledge of what is right and wrong, Mr. Brady. How old do you think this rock is? I am more interested in the rock of ages than I am in the age of rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Page of Overland College tells me this rock is at least 10 million years old. Well, well, Colonel Drummond. You managed to sneak in some of that scientific testimony after all. <laughs> Look, Mr. Brady. These are the fossil remains of a marine prehistoric creature found in this very county and which lived here millions of years ago when these very mountain ranges were submerged in water. I know. The Bible gives a fine account of the flood. But your professor's a little mixed up on his dates. That rock is not more than 6,000 years old. How do you know? A fine biblical scholar, Bishop Usher, has determined for us the exact date and hour of the creation. It occurred in the year 4004 B.C. 
Well, uh, that, that's uh, Bishop Usher's opinion. It's not an opinion. It's a literal fact which the good bishop arrived at through careful computation of the ages of the prophets as set down in the Old Testament. In fact, he determined that the Lord began the creation on the 23rd of October, 4004 B.C., at uh, 9 a.m. At Eastern Standard Time? <laughs> or Rocky Mountain Time? <laughs> it wasn't daylight saving time, was it? Because the Lord didn't make the sun until the fourth day. That is correct. That first day, well, what do you think? It was uh, 24 hours long? The Bible says it was a day. Well, there was no sun. Uh, you know, how, how do you know how long it was? The Bible says it was a day. Well, was it a normal day, a literal day, 24-hour day? I don't know. <clears throat> what do you think? I do not think about things that I do not think about. Do you ever think about things that you do think about? Isn't it possible that it could have been 25 hours? There's no way to measure it, no way to tell. Could it have been 25 hours? It is possible. Then you interpret that the first day as recorded in the book of Genesis could have been a day of indeterminate length. I mean to state that it is not necessarily a 24-hour day. It could have been 30 hours. Could have been a week. Could have been a month. Could have been a year, could have been a hundred years, or it could have been ten million years. I protest. This is not only irrelevant, immaterial, it is illegal. I demand to know the purpose of Mr. Drummond's examination. What's he trying to do? I'll tell you what he's trying to do. He wants to destroy everybody's belief in the Bible and in God. That's not true, and you know it. The Bible is a book. It's a good book, but it is not the only book. It is a revealed word of the Almighty God. Spake to the man who wrote the Bible. How do you know that God didn't speak to Charles Darwin? I know because God tells me to oppose the evil teachings of that man. Oh, God speaks to you? Yes. He tells you what is right and wrong? Yes. And you act accordingly? Yes. So you, Matthew Harris and Brady, through oratory or legislature or whatever, you pass on God's orders to the rest of the world. Well... Meet the prophet from Nebraska. Oh, yeah, I, 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 is please, that please, the please. way of things? No. Is that the way of things? God tells Brady what is good. To be against Brady is to be against God. Oh, each man is a free agent. Then what is Bertram Cates doing in the Hillsborough jail? No. Supposing Mr. Cates had the influence and the lung power to railroad through the state legislature a law saying that only Darwin could be taught in the schools. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. There is only one great truth in the world. The gospel. Mm. The gospel according to Brady. Uh, God speaks to Brady and Brady tells the world. Brady, Brady, Brady almighty. The Lord, the Lord is my Suppose friend. Suppose that a lesser human being. Suppose a Cates or a Darwin had the audacity to think that God might whisper to him that an un-Brady thought might still be holy. Must a man go to prison because he differs with the self-appointed prophet? Extend the testaments. Let us have a book of Brady. We shall hex the penny tube and slip you in neatly between Numbers and Deuteronomy. Am I my friends? Sir, you're on the witness. My, my followers, ladies and gentlemen, the witnesses. All of you know what I stand for. What I believe. I believe in the truth of the book of Genesis. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judge Israel, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel. Court is adjourned until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Matt. Matt, dear. Let's go home. Home? Back to the hotel. Yeah. Mm -hmm.